Warren Jacob of Shits, son of French Americans, but born in Lithuania, uh uh, but born in Lithuania, uh uh, and then at age 18, he moved to Paris to become an artist, an artist, to become an artist. Mm -mm. And when in Paris, he met a lot of Cubists and joined the Esprit Nouveau, a new art movement that wanted to innovate. But his father was a contractor, tur tur, and a pushback as a sculptor, tur tur tur. But his mother was a dreamer, mur mur mur, and said, Go for it, go for it. And in 1925, five, 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 he began chester and sculpture, chur, 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 and moved from tradition, no, 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 no. Cubism, cubism. Hey, hey, hey. Just think, while y'all have been using old forms of cubism, we've been using angular, more organic, and free form. Our best man won a gold medal. We're like, oh my god, at the World Expo? After three years, he fled to Toulouse and then went to New York City. But his father was a contractor, tur, tur, and a postdoc as a sculptor, tur, tur, tur. But his mother was a dreamer, mur, 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 and said, go for it, go for it. And in 1925, five, 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 he began to insert sculpture, and move from tradition, no, 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 no. Cubism, cubism. So thank you so much for um, watching our little Shake It Off parody. <laughs> Um, now we're going to clarify some key facts about Lipschitz's life um, that we weren't really able to touch on in the video. Right, so Lipschitz was born in 1891, and he was born in Lithuania. Mm -hmm. And despite being um, born in Lithuania, he is considered French-American because his parents were French-Americans. Right. Um, in 1909, he decided to move to Paris, but this was a decision that he made that his father greatly, greatly, greatly opposed because his father himself was a contractor and um, wanted Lipschitz to be an engineer. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, I've circled it because it's a very um, it's a very key moment in Lipschitz's life. And despite his father being against his decision, his mom was a lot more supportive of um, his moving and, um, you know, becoming an artist. So um, from 1915 to 1916, which is Right about there. That's when he started his first Cubist phase. And this was a point in time when um, he started only making Cubist sculptures. Now, in 1913 is when he made his first one, but also at this time he was making um, other art. But mm -hmm. from 1915 to 1916 is when he was only doing Cubism. Yeah, and some of the examples of previous art ha art that he did um, was transparent sculpture. And um, I guess it could be considered a form of Cubist sculpture, but it it's exactly what it sounds like. It's basically sculpture made out of glass or transparent material and um so here is another key point of his life when he was in paris in 1922 he um, joined this um, artistic movement called the esprit nouveau and esprit nouveau is a parisian art movement that strived um, for innovation and for a departure from kind of past um, traditional art forms so, 1937 was a huge year for Lipschitz. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he created Prometheus, um, which is right over here, for the World Expo. And it was... Um, it was a really big year for him, and this was um, the, the work that really um, brought Lipschitz to fame, in a way. And in 1940, though, um, 1940 was another big year for Lipschitz. And the reason for this was um, the World War... And so, because of the World War, he decided, of World War II, I'm sorry, he decided to um, move to Toulouse from Paris, and then in 1947, um, he moved to New York City. Right. In 1973, he died um, in Capri, Italy, but he decided to be buried in Jerusalem because of his strong Jewish background. So, the work we're going to focus on today is called The Bather, and it was made in 1917, and it's made out of bronze. Um, it's two feet and ten and three fourths inches high, so it's about three feet high. And at the moment, it is at the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art in Kansas City. 
And um, one of the reasons that we had to clarify that it was made of bronze was because Lipschitz um, actually made several bathers, and we'll show them to you in the next slide. So as I, as I was saying in the previous slide, um, the, the bather to the furthest left is the one that we're going to be focusing on. And here on the right, these are two other examples of bathers that um, Jacques did um, throughout his career. Okay, so in this work, um, Lipschitz used classical subject matter. So uh, there's a nymph-like woman shown, and just in case you didn't know, um, a nymph is actually a mythological spirit that tends to inhabit various forms of nature, be it rivers or trees or grass or whatever, And but it usually takes the form of a beautiful maiden woman. So it's showing her stepping into a bath and she's holding her drapery and looking over her shoulder. You know it's kind of hard to see, but this is her head over here. This is her head, this is her shoulder, and her drapery is down here. Okay, so what uh, Lipschitz did in this sculpture is he um, broke the continuous form into this work into cubic volumes and planes. So the interlocking figures and um, and he gracefully intersected irregular facets and curves. And so what that did is it represented a parallel analysis of dynamic form. And so as you can see, um, right, so there's there's interlocking forms here. And there's interlocking forms right about here. And so it's basically just shapes that normally wouldn't go together. And he's interlocked them to look uh, as if they're together. Mm -hmm. And this kind of aspect of Lipschitz's sculpture um, is very reminiscent of works by leading cubists like Picasso and Brock. Because, um, exactly because of the reason Sarah just said. Because of, this, um, of these kind of odd shapes that you wouldn't normally see put together. Especially in a sculpture. So the reason the bather in 1917 looks the way it does is because of Lipschitz's drive to create a new innovative form of analytic cubism that um, he could make his own. And he truly did with this work and with the um, very irregular shapes, like we mentioned before, the interlocking and the curves and the, the classical right. subject matter. Mm -hmm. um, later, he produced less volumetric sculptures, and they included more um, empty spaces that were outlined by metal shapes. And so in these sculptures, what he was doing is he was pursuing the cubist notion of spatial ambiguity and the relationship between solid forms and space. Mm -hmm, exactly. As we discussed before, Jacques Lipschitz did many of the bather, and um, the work that really inspired him to start this um, collection of the bather was Falconet's Venice Aubin, and it wasn't the only work by Falconet that inspired Jacques Lipschitz. And in subject matter, it is very, very similar to um, to the bather. And here you see Venus, and she's um, looking over her shoulder, and um, she's lifting her drapery, and she's getting into the bath, much like um, is supposed to happen, or what the bather is supposed to look like. Thank you so much for listening to us talk about uh, The Bather and Jack Lipschitz. And we hope um, you really learned something. And if you still need something clarified, feel free to ask us.